Hitchcock rear window horny guy. Super cute. Super cute. But it's about heroin. Fun and floppy. Gay baby daddy. So adorable. What? It's, do you, like this side is having a party and then this side is just like, you know, it had its one cocktail, but this one did like the tequila shot. There we go. Sonny's book truck, unreliable narrator in black to save the day. Sonny's book truck, here to save the day. Love this. Hi, hello, it's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. We got the spicy water on deck. Here to do a reading wrap up of March. We read eight books. Not bad, not bad. I'm just gonna go through the books real quick give you a little like flash flash review because i'll go more in depth about them in future vlogs uh yes it's me from the future as you are you know peeping in as you're enjoying vlog content but just wanted to do this wrap up because i kind of enjoy them they they give me this like sort of sense of Accomplishment. It's the illusion. The illusion of accomplishment. I've done stuff. I read eight books. I'm proud of me. Pat on the back. Okay, but let's get into it. I started the month strong with Jonathan Franzen's Crossroads because homeboy Jalen, homeboy Jalen spoke to the Franzen man himself. Oh, which is incredible. I'll have it linked downstairs. Super good interview. The one thing I hate about like book tours and author interviews, you know, when a new release comes out, is everyone asks the same goddamn questions. Like, you have to be that dry to have to ask the same questions. And Jalen comes in strong with really good questions about the writer self, auto fiction. The purpose of a writer, Franzen's purpose, and Franzen talked about his core self, and it was really, really interesting. Anyway, Jonathan Franzen, Crossroads. I don't think I wrote a full review on Goodreads for this, because it's just, it's way too big. It's way too big to be talked about, and I won't talk about it. It follows the Hildenbrandts, a family, sheds light on the pretties and uglies of each character through familial hierarchies, what we give, what we take, and what we sacrifice as individuals within this family. I wrote, Crossroads is the director's cut of a Eugene O'Neill play for people who think The New Yorker is super important. Solid four stars, what can I say? If you've read early Franzen and then stopped, you should pick this up because Franzen is less angry. He's not his like angry self and comes back with this sort of more subdued, empathetic family saga done in a day and a half, takes place within a very tiny time frame, And it's great. It's remarkable. It's solid four stars. And then definitely watch Jalen's video, uh, Reading the Room. Super good. Enjoyed it. Oh, I want to say I was super intimidated by its size at first, but there is just a readability to this new voice that I think he's just developed and perfected in that it's just really, yeah, readable. What I really enjoyed about Jalen's interview was that Franzen talked about how these days he doesn't enjoy so much the act of the simile and is able to write in this like clear cut language that focuses a lot less on metaphor and more partial metaphor into symbolism, powers itself through character and 
strong story and it's really entertaining. Like I could already visualize like a mini series and I can't wait if it ever happens, but yeah, fun stuff. Then filming at work, office to myself. I totally forgot, but I also I actually started the month with Joanna Walsh's My Life as a Godard film which tracks the female experience through Godard cinema. And this is my second Walsh. And I'm just gonna say, I don't think Walsh is particularly for me, just the way that she talks about her ideas and incorporates it into her books. She'll have all the interesting things to say, but to know like, really good conclusive end. It's all like very wishy-washy and it'll probably be my last Walsh, but if you're a Godard fan, even if you're not, if you're interested about the female experience and body as image through cinema and color, then this is a, this is a really interesting one. Because I read an incredibly long book, I picked up a tiny book, The Employees by Olga Rabin. My first, super fun, super weird, about the anxieties of the workplace in space. And it's really fun. Just, yeah, oddball, fun, quick, loved the form. Yeah, you can easily reread it again. It's a collection of testimonies from androids and humans aboard this fun spacecraft that doesn't know where it's headed. Yeah, really fun. And then after that, I read Monsters, A Fan's Dilemma by Claire Dederer. It's my only nonfiction of the month. It isn't so much the anti-cancel culture book, but definitely examines the art of monstrous men and what to do with that. If you are having a hard time figuring out how to navigate talking about problematic people whose art you love. Like, if any of you out here are listening to Kanye West or still love Harry Potter, or like me, who enjoyed Woody Allen's early films, who I took quite a lot of inspiration from, Claire also does. And she also has a love for Roman Polanski. And she talks about these two men very early in the book and how that propels her into sort of the inquiries of why she wrote this book. But her main point is that we should separate or know the difference between ethical thoughts and moral feelings and how to create better conversations and talk smartly about these two things. Yes. I said last time in my wrap up that Saving Time was the sort of textbook read of the year. Well, I'm gonna change that. It's Monsters by Claire Detterer, so read that too. Read them both. They're good, they're good. Oh, sorry, I should probably let you know. This is out by Knopf, April 25th. Pick it up. Okay, and then I, ooh, we have a DNF. I DNF'd Deep as the Sky, Red as the Sea by Rita Chang, a pig. But it's about a female pirate in the South China Seas. I just didn't like the writing so much. I gave it 25% and the writing just didn't do it for me. It definitely had that like sci-fi fantasy language that I just didn't quite care for. And it just seemed like Rita was writing towards violence just to get to violence sake, uh, which is very interesting because if you read her short stories, I think she does really interesting things with violence in the body. And I'll have a short story linked below, but I think, I think she's better suited as a short story writer than a novel list. So yeah, DNF, my second DNF of the year. Deep as the Sky, Red as the Sea is also an ARC out by Bloomsbury, uh, May 30th. But if you enjoy a swashbuckling journey that's like Treasure Planet-esque, I think you might enjoy this. And I love Treasure Planet, by the way. That's a good tune. Love, love a good tune. 
Then I had another ARC. I decided to do YA. Unexpecting by Jen Bailey. It's about a gay baby daddy. A gay baby daddy. Yes, just lots of fun. It's advertised as Juno meets Heartstopper. And yeah, it's just really light, really fun. Really captures the high school experience. Very light and fun. I can already imagine the Netflix adaptation. It's very Netflixy. And then, oh, finally, a physical book that I can show you too. Um, Joe Bernard's I Remember, which is basically about Bernard's life and every single sentence begins with I remember. And it goes on just like that, I remember. But he's from sort of New York, new school genre of art, if you're into that. There's a lot of uh, mentions of Frank O'Hara and his sissy walks. Just also very light and fun and really makes you question, what would you remember if you started a book with I remember? What book would you write? But yes, lots of fun. Picked this up in New York when I was with Bibliou Sophie. Cute. It was a cute read. Then I did A Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison for Sunny's Book Truck, Book Talk for March. And oh, wows, oh, wows. I, yeah, Toni Morrison's fantabulous. She's, we will be in the depths of this in a future vlog. Already demands a reread from me. I think I could read it like six, seven more times and get something in absolutely new out of it but definitely focuses on name, what a name means, what legacy means through names, how places are formed because of names, and yeah, what we seek out in order to be named, what name claims of us. Song of Solomon, Toni Morrison. I can't wait to read more Morrison. And uh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And then kept it light in sort of the last week of March with the early stories of Truman Capote. Cause look at that dog. How could you not? How could you not? So adorable. Cute little stories, a definitely good beach read. Short stories that you could fall asleep to. They're very short, like four or five pages. And the font's big, love that. Reminds me of like YA fonts. It's nice. It's, this is a perfect beach read because it's like fun and floppy. And look at that orange. It's got that penguin classic orange, which is not, but it's got the, the classic orange. If you're a fan of Truman Capote, I definitely recommend picking this up. If you are a creative writing major or are interested in the art of writing and have read late Truman Capote, want to focus on how a writer sort of develops their craft and what they focus on. These are also really fun to look at. He had been seriously writing at the age of 11. He was one of those kids that would go home, not play outside, go home and spend three or four hours writing stories and perfecting craft. So yeah, these stories sort of track his like things he wrote in his teen years to his early late 20s. And yeah, they're a real delight. And you really see how he focuses on how he creates empathy in his characters. Really fun, light stories. And that was March. Um, I'll also do a quick, and I watched 20 movies in March, which is a lot. <laughs> um, I started off with The Fifth Seal. Okay, well, it's set in Budapest and it's sort of like, 12 angry men but it's about what to do as a person as man during world war ii what does man do in the midst of war and yeah really really terrifying the last half of the film is wild if you enjoyed 12 angry men i think you would like this perhaps then i watched the ice storm by ang lee and super underrated I had no idea this film existed, go watch it. But if you like white suburbia, melodrama, familiar, if you like Franzen, you will like The Ice Storm. I think I like this a lot better than American Beauty. When I think of like white suburban, melodramatic, upper middle class family dramas, 
I think of American Beauty, but I definitely like the Ice Storm a lot more. Then I watched Some Came Running with Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra is a bit stiff in this, but you kind of understand why he's kind of stiff in the way that he loves. It's a fun one. It's a it's a good good old film. Dean Martin's in it. Yeah, it's cute. Then I watched Phallus the Man by Chion Sono, and it's a gay gangster film. 50 minutes. Super grainy film. Crazy. That was fun. Then I watched Le Boom, The Party, a 1980s French classic film. I wanted to know what the hype was about. Uh, wasn't prepared for the bit of slightly racist bit in there, but it was fine. It was super cute. There's this one scene where everyone's at a house party and they're dancing and it's like super dancing music, but the guy comes up to the main girl and puts headphones over her and it's like a very slow song and it's just really sweet and tender, but it's cute. Then I watched an Italian horror film. I'm sorry, it's not a t horror. I thought it was horror, but it was more like drama. Smile Before Death by Silvio Amadio. I've been trying to watch more Italian horror that isn't, you know, Dario Argento. So yeah, tried this out. And it's kind of a sleeper. Yeah, it was whatever. I thought it was I. I think it was like the most boring crime drama. I've ever seen with like the shortest running time. Then I watched Sidewalls, such an adorable film, but it's about a man and a woman and their little lonely lives and their lives are like so adjacent that they end up falling in love with each other. And it's just really cute. Very early, I wanna say like 2008, 2010, 2011 films and yeah, never heard of it until now, and it's it's a joy. It's a joy. Then I watched Song to Song by Terrence Malick. Good old Malick. I think this one relates closely to Knights of Cup. Not his best, but it's it's I. It's I. You know, Terrence Malick does Lollapalooza, South by Southwest, or Coachella. And then I watched Party Girl. Super fun. Fun 90s film. Great 90s soundtrack. It has a very young Parker Posey, and she she is true girl boss in that film. That's a new fave. That's my new comfort watch. There's just some like great one-liners in there that are just insane. Then I watched The Virgin Spring, Igmar Bergman, an adaptation of a play, and this one is just downright depressing. A little girl, 16 or so, gets raped, murdered and then the rest of the film is just agonizing i know it was good good bergman um, has like a nice bergman touch to it yeah but it was just like so depressing um then i watched blue jean which was so so good shot on film just like beautifully well done a lesbian double mask narrative about her and her relationship with a student and I'll just leave it there. But it's it's great, it's phenomenal. Then I watched The Blue Light by Lenny Reifenstahl, who was, get this, insane, but a female German director in the 1930s. And the film is so dreamy in within nature. And it's just so, so gorgeous. Like to imagine that imagery like that came out of the 1930s is insane. And then here's the punchline. She's a fucking Nazi. Insane. Insane. But stunning. Then I watched, rewatched Manhattan after I think like about almost a decade, eight or nine years, I haven't seen it, because of Clara Dederer's uh, Monsters. Still, still a good, beautiful movie, but recontextualize beginning is kind of cringe and just like 42 year old Woody Allen's character falling in love with a 17 year old is just not it. Not it. Still shot beautifully, but not it. Then I watched, ooh, La Piscine, The Swimming Pool with Alain Delon and oof, God, what a sexy summer film. This will also be a major comfort watch for me. Just like something to put in the background, just like lush, 
hot, sexy people by the pool with like the greatest tense death scene. Oh, so good. New favorite summer film. Then I watched The Panic in Needle Park with a young Al Pacino, written by Didion Duns. Who Didion done it? But yes, Joan Didion and her husband, John Gregory Dunn. Yeah, I felt like this was all right. I really wanted to watch this because Joan Didion, you know, co-wrote the script. And she also wrote A Star is Born, the original with Barbara Streisand, which I want to see. You can totally see that Didion wrote herself into the female protagonist and it's so her like her visualized on film is great and that's why i loved it and i wonder if she wrote it so that she could like you know in this like little world could fall in love with al pacino super cute super cute but it's about heroin then i watched tokyo soda which is this super quiet gentle japanese film where i don't know I don't know what happened, but it was like so quiet that like I didn't even want to breathe because I didn't want to like disturb or interrupt the film. I felt like if I made some kind of noise, any shift in movement and motion that I would disturb the film. And then in the end, it sort of broke me, which I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know. But it's it's an incredibly quiet and boring film. I'll tell you that. But by the end, there's just this, I don't know, this like magical tenderness after seeing so much silence, it just does something to you. Um, yeah. Then I watched Of an Age because Lucy from Lucy Rutherford, I had this on my radar after Lucy talked about it, I was just like, I want to watch this. And it was fun. It was cute. I think the, th the third of the act kind of dragged a bit for me, but cute, just cute coming of age queer story about a guy who falls in love with her friend's brother. Yeah, super cute. It's interesting because a majority of the film is shot like super up close. Like the camera is so up close. And it's just, I was just like kind of a bit claustrophobic. But I think that plays into sort of the thrill element that the film begins with. And then sort of the tenderness and intimacy that develops. And yeah, really good banter between the two, two main leads. Fun stuff. Then I watched Go, which is so unhinged, but super classic 90s film. It's 1999, right on the cusp. And you know what? Fuck Pulp Fiction. This is my Pulp Fiction. Go is my Pulp Fiction. But it's got... It's got Sarah Pulley, Katie Holmes, and just like, ooh, ooh, Melissa McCarthy's in here. And also, oh, what's her name from 30 Rock? Oh my God, oh my God, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, Jane Krakowski. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't know why that took forever. But yeah, fun surprises from Melissa McCarthy and Jane Krakowski. Just a fun roller coaster of 90s nonsense. High stakes, high stakes. And then I was sort of at, at this work thing and in the background, they are playing this documentary, so I'm counting it. It set the piano stool on fire about Kit Armstrong, who was a piano prodigy and his piano teacher, Alfred Brendel, who is a renowned pianist. Yeah, just really cute. The music was good. <laughs> yeah, it was cute. I don't know. I, I, I'm always fascinated by like child prodigies and just like the amount of attention that they have. But it's Kid Kit. Cool kid. I think he's grown up now and uh, he's pretty great. He's like fluent in like three, four languages. It's insane. And then I ended the month with Hi Mom which features a very young Robert De Niro as this Hitchcock rear window horny guy. And then it becomes this sort of like black exploitation film. And it's just wild. I, at first I was like, wow, is this movie actually for real? A very strange early Brian De Palma film. And yeah, that is, that is March and a Wrap. Thanks for being here. I didn't want this to be too long, but we're at 33 minutes. Yikes. So that's it. 
Let me know your favorite read of March. Let me add it to my TBR. I love adding things to my TBR, but yes, be well. Be well, do good work, keep in touch.